Hi there, this is Carl Irwin with a quick update on um, MuseScore's development for Jack Audio and Linux. Uh, there is a pull request that is open for MuseScore 4 uh, to incorporate Jack uh, synchronization of some sort, so the, the ability to run audio through Jack server on Linux uh, and also MIDI. Um, and that is this pull request right here. Uh, for Jack MIDI support. Um, the goal here was for uh, Linux users to have the ability at runtime to switch between ALS and Jack Audio and MIDI driver. And so far, that is what the project is centered on. Um, I've tried to run this uh, pull request build um, a number of times over the last couple days. And uh, there's quite a bit of progress there in that you can actually choose the Jack server. You can uh, link MIDI uh, within uh, the patch bay and audio, um, which you could already do pretty seamlessly anyway for, for the audio just because of pulse audio, or, uh, or rather the replacement of pulse audio with pipe wire. So pipe wire emulates pulse audio and Jack as well. So with that emulation layer, you really could already route audio from MuseScore 4 in through Jack aware applications. Um, but this is actually using the Jack layer to do it. Um, what I, what I'm interested in though, is, uh, this third issue related to MIDI, which is the Jack transport. It is the synchronization aspect of the, uh, MIDI side of Jack. Um, the Jack transport has to do with uh, the ability to uh, uh, synchronize one application with another through Jack. So real quick, if I just open up, in fact, I don't even have this open, but let me open this up. This is QJack control we'll use as our transport uh, controller. And you can see there's a play button down here to start the transport rolling. This is actually linked to any other application that is running through Jack and has transport capability. So just to demonstrate the idea, this is Muse Score 3, um, which has that capability. If we go up to Edit Preferences and we look down here under the Import Input Output, we have Jack Audio Server, we have Use Jack Audio, Use Jack MIDI, and then down here we have Use Jack Transport. This is the function I think that actually gets us the most out of anything in Jack. If we can get this function and provided that we can connect audio, we can really do an awful lot. And let me just show you how this, how this would work if, for those of you that may not be aware. Um, so this is already hooked up. Uh, this is MuseScore 3. And I have open actually Blender and I have the video editor in Blender, which you could load in audio files and video files, and this is linked. Uh, Blender has the capability to link through Jack. It's a it's a normal part of their build, even the very current builds that are cross-platform. Uh, this is just an as assumption that it will have Jack transport capability and uh, Jack audio and MIDI capability as well, well audio capability in particular. Um, and you can see here that on if I click on QJack Jack control, if I click up, play on the transport, uh, MuseScore plays and the uh, and Blender plays as well on the video file. And if I hit stop or pause, it will stop. But I could also hit play from Blender and it will play as well. And I could hit play from uh, MuseScore 3 and it will play as well. And these synchronize. Uh, you can see where I left off. If I click back in Blender, back here towards the beginning, and I hit play on MuseScore, it will actually synchronize where the playhead will move back in MuseScore 3 and in Blender to the same location. This is very useful because now I can score to picture. But not only can I do that, but I can also play back the audio in Blender from the file or layers of audio. I can layer in all kinds of an audio mix here and play this back uh, in addition to the audio output from MuseScore. Now this is MuseScore 3 and the problem is, is that I don't have this really hot, fantastic play engine and all the Muse sounds capable. Um, so the goal here was to create uh, this capability or at least some MIDI audio capability uh, through Jack in MuseScore 4. But I don't think mere MIDI and audio capability is enough. You really need to have the transport capability. It's the transport capability that gets us the most, as I said. I just want to show you again, um, this is uh, Q-Tractor. 
uh, which I have Q-Tractor open here. This is a digital audio workstation, and this also has jack transport. This even has uh, choices here for the type of transport. You can have full uh, transport, or you can have, uh, uh, over here, you can have full mode, or you can have master or slave mode. Right now, all three applications are in full transport mode. And if I hit play here in Blender, you can see the playhead uh, uh, follows along. It, rather, if I, if I hit play from... Go back here. If I hit play from uh, uh, Q-Tractor, you can see the playhead will follow along with, with Blender, okay? Or I could do the same thing from the Jack uh, Q-Jack control if I hit play. And it looks here like I've got, if I stop just for a moment, it looks like with Q-Tractor, I don't have it really, it says full, but it's not really, maybe if I click this to master, it might, or rather if I put it on um, slave, let's try that. So I hit play. Yeah, there we go. So now, now this is picking up everything from Blender or from uh, uh, QJack Control. When I hit play, it should work. There we go. So now we're synchronized. This is the kind of capability we're talking about. Now think about this in terms of what you would get. With a digital audio workstation, I could have MIDI um, tracks in here with completely different instrumentation and it would be synchronized with MuseScore. So coming back here, you can see where the playhead is at just after uh, the second measure, just before the third measure. If I go back to MuseScore and I hit play, you can see that's where we picked that up at. And this will go along and we'll come into uh, measure five here, assuming it's the exact same um, uh, tempo and meter. And if I go back to Q-Tractor, you can see where we have our playhead. Okay. So you can see this actually makes sense because this is set for uh, 144. Now, if I change this here to 120, which is what uh, MuseScore is set at, now we're in the exact same location. So you see the synchronization. Provided that I have uh, the same meter and the same tempos and everything set here, I could synchronize music from my DAW with MuseScore, and then I could either export those audio files separate and then mix them down, or I could mix down directly through Jack Audio to, or in this case, Pipewire emulation, to a recording application. Or I could bounce everything down into the DAW because I could run MuseScore into the DAW. This is with MuseScore 3. This is the kind of capability we had. Extremely powerful for uh, all kinds of music creation, but specifically for film score. Now, I just want to close this out real quick. Um, oh, by the way, our door, other applications have video players inside. So XJDO is actually embedded inside of, or rather it's it's pointed to from our door. So from Linux, I could actually have my video player and, and video track directly in our door and do all of the work directly from that um digital audio workstation. But Q-Tractor, of course, does the same thing. This is normal. This is expected. Audio, audio software should have this capability, particularly on Linux. So let me close this out. I'm going to keep this open. I'm going to close up MuseScore 3, and I'll just keep this open here. I want to open up the branch build. This is the um, uh, Jack branch, the latest one as of this video. And uh, if I open this up, you'll see it now gives us this um, deceptively wonderful looking option. You see down here we have playback and you see that we can choose jack. Okay, I can choose jack or also or whatever and I can uh, point my MIDI output also through jack as well. This is a great start. This is a great start. But what seems to be missing is the um, transport, the transport. So if I uh, just open up a new score, and I'll just blank score here, um, and this should be 120 beats per minute, just like the last score. And now if I open up my uh, uh, QJack control graph here, so I can just see what's connected, you can see I now have mu score, and it gives me MuseScore MIDI output, which I could run to a MIDI aware application. And it gives me, within Jack, it gives me my audio left and right. And this is great. Now, the problem is, is that there's no socket for transport. Now, normally there isn't a socket for transport. It's something that runs without socket. Uh, you can see the Blender here has the audio output via Jack, just like MuseScore 4 does. But uh, the transport is something that's running underneath the hood, the synchronization. If I close this out, and now if I hit play in the transport in, in uh, a QJack control, it does not play from here. There's no, 
there's no transport option, but I need to have that access in order to do synchronization. And I think that is the real end to this project. Ultimately, it's not really about the MIDI. It's not really about sending MIDI out because I can do MIDI data inside of a digital audio workstation and still synch synchronize it with MuseScore and all of the great sounds that MuseScore can create. I don't really need, nobody really needs to send MIDI signal out from MuseScore uh, into another kind of plugin or into an external application because you can do that all through DAW. Now, perhaps someone might find it more streamlined to be able to do that, to send MIDI signal out like we did with MuseScore 3, which you could do that. You could set a MIDI channel and a bus, and you could send that signal out. But that was before we had this play engine and the Muse sounds that are now there, okay? And the AI uh, play engine that uh, picks upon these samples in such a brilliant way to create realistic playback. Now I think the real goal is to take these great sounds in this play engine, this output, and in real time be able to run that along with video and or along with another application that has MIDI capability and MIDI data. And then thereby you could compose across the distribution to multiple applications. You can com compose across applications and then funnel that down to a final output. Or at least a real-time output you could render separately and then mix those together. Um, but you really cannot do a uh, film score or that kind of work in the way that should be at this point in technology and really has been this way for over 20 years now. It really should be this way. Applications have been working this way since. You cannot do that without the jack transport feature. So that's really what we need to get uh, inside of MuseScore 4. We need to get a transport function. I recommend that the transport function just be automatic that it just run, whenever you select jack, just let it run in transport and let it run full transport. So neither slave nor master, but both, uh, like Blender does, so that you have just the ability to hit play from any application and it will just synchronize along with uh, MuseScore. However, if it is easier, make MuseScore the master. If you could make a default master transport capability, that would be perfectly adequate as well. At least then you could start from MuseScore and have a video player open um, and do some film scoring that way. Um, but, but either way, it's the jack transport feature. We need to be able to get this, this data stream uh, working in the back end, which doesn't seem to be a focus quite yet of this uh, pull request. So uh, that is just my take on it my assessment of the situation and what I think really is the ultimate end to this um, project. It really is to get transport running just so you can get synchronization. That really solves a lot of problems without having to create layers of MIDI control at the channel level per instrument because that's really where you're headed. If you're really concerned about MIDI output, I think then the next step is that you'd have to create a whole bunch of controls and features at every channel level that will send MIDI data out uh, per channel via a bus, 16 total channels, multiple buses to get more than 16 channels and so on and so forth. Really, if we could just get transport, you bypass all of that. There wouldn't be any need to do any of that because you could do your MIDI composition from a proper digital audio workstation and just run it uh, in synchronization in tandem along with MuseScore 4 and be able to get fairly appropriate playback uh, with a low latency kernel. So um, that's that's my my concept of this, and I've been expressing those views in this pull request. We'll see where the developers... I'm not a developer, so I, I really have no capability to do this. I don't have time to learn it. Uh, I've, I'm, I'm very busy with my real work, which has nothing to do with programming, so it's not something I can do. All I can do is conceptually provide my assessment of what would be useful, I think, to end users, and I really think the transport feature is the goal. It's the transport that we need and the ability to pipe the stereo audio out of MuseScore 4 to another application so that we can do mix down 
Uh, that is that is ultimately what we want. Synchronization and audio mix down. Those two things, at least for temporary viewing um, while we're working or composing. So anyway, good luck with that. Happy composing and happy mixing.